Welcome into our math party, my ASVAB party people. In this video, we're gonna be doing two questions here regarding probability. So this first one is about simple probability, and the second one here is about compound probability. So it's gonna be a nice little mini lesson for us. So let's go ahead and dive in. As always, I don't care what topic we're doing, the first thing we need to do is what, my party people? Read that question. So when we read through, you know, we see that we're gonna see the word if right over here. So it says, if a marble is selected at random from the jar, what is the probability that it will be blue? Okay, cool. So again, the question is basically saying, hey, if we pick a marble at random, so marble is selected at random, what's the probability that we get blue? So they also tell us that the answer should be a fraction. Nice and easy. But here's the main thing. Whenever you see probability problems, the great thing is that they have to tell you that it's probability. You know, there's only two words that they can really use. They can use what, what's the probability, or they can say what are the chances, maybe even what are the odds. But that's as far as they can go. So it's going to be pretty obvious when you're dealing with probability. And so the moment that you know you're dealing with probability, especially in this case, just finding one probability, the great thing is, is that there's a formula. The formula for probability, let's zoom on in right over here. The formula for probability is this. Probability equals the outcome that you want, the wanted outcome right over here. And you're going to have it as a fraction. So wanted outcome divided by all possible outcomes. All right, there we go. Booyah. So watch how this comes into play. This is actually gonna be fairly straightforward, fairly straightforward, because when you're asking yourself, hey, what's the outcome that I want? Well, that outcome that I want is blue. I want a blue marble selected at random. Sounds good. So I'll say right over here that my probability is gonna be equal to blue over all marbles. Does that make a little more sense there, my party people? Again, it's gonna be fairly straightforward. The next question, you'll see how we use the same exact principle, just again, that's it. So here we go. How many blue marbles are there? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. We see that we have 18 blue marbles right there. We have 12 red, 18 blue, six green. But I'm gonna care about the 18 blue right here. That's exactly what I wanted. So we have 18 right there and then all marbles. Again, the word all means literally all, not all except blue. No, 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 no. All of them need to be blue. Or excuse me, all of the marbles is what we're counting. Excuse me. So here we have 12 red, 18 blue, and six green. If we add all of that together, let's go ahead and do that over here. So we have 12 red, then we have 18 blue, and then we have six green right over here. All right, so we'll just go ahead and add all that up. And what are we going to get for the total? We'll get a total of 36 marbles right there. So sweet, it's 18 over a total of 36. And if we kind of just open our eyes a little bit, we'll see that 18 is actually half of 36. And we can simplify this fraction because that's what they told us to. Right there, simplified fraction. So 18 over 36, that's going to be the same thing as 1 over 2. And that is why D is the correct answer, my party people. And again, we have another question coming up right after this one. But take a moment, take your notes, make sure you write out your probability formula, because we're going to step into another problem that goes over compound probability right over here. So before I get into this one, my party people, if you are in the program, this is going to be in your arithmetic reasoning uh, course, and it's going to be unit number 12. All right. You're going to have a uh, probability and statistics in there. So it's going to be a lot of fun lessons, worksheets, recordings, practice, and step-by-step -step solutions all there waiting for you. For those of you who are not in the program, you should definitely take advantage of our holiday sale going on right now. Our Memorial Day sale is live. So if you would rather text us first before you make a decision, go ahead. There's my phone number right there. Text our team. It's a texting only line. Or if you're ready, go ahead and just check out the link in the description. There's a nice little video and a really easy sign up process and it gets you started right away. So it's really easy in the sense of you don't have to figure anything out. Everything's lined up for you. All you have to do is put in the work. 
So let's get into the second one, my party people. Here we go. So straight to the question sentence right over here. So it says, if you select two marbles at random, and this is a very important thing right here, without replacement, I'm going to come back to that in a few moments. But if we select two marbles, look at that, not one now, two marbles, what is the probability that the first is red and the second is blue? Okay, so this is going to be a pretty complex question, or seemingly, but I'm going to show you how to handle this like a pro. So here, first marble, red, second marble is blue. Sweet. So just like we had earlier, I'll come back over here and I'll just go ahead and copy that formula. So let me grab this and then I'll paste it right over here and blow it up just a little bit so we know exactly how we're going to use this. So here we go. If we want to find the first chance, so the first time that we pick the first marble being red, well, we're going to say that the first probability is going to be equal to the number of red which is going to be 12 red marbles right there over the total number of marbles. So we have 12 red, let's write this over here, 12 red, 18 blue, and then 10 green. Okay, great. So we have the three of those set up, we add that all together, and we then get a total of 40 total marbles. So there it is, we have 12 over 40. So again, this part here represents picking red in round one. But then they say, hey, if we're not replacing it, what's the probability of getting the first and the second? What do we do there? So this is now not just simple probability, this is what's called compound probability. So let me write this down over here at the bottom left. Compound probability is what this is right there booyah so how does prob compound probability work well you're just going to go ahead and multiply the probabilities the way that you know you're dealing with compound probability is that you have one thing happen and then another thing happen so more than one thing happening okay more than one thing happening more than one event happening selecting red and then selecting blue what you do with compound probability is you multiply the probabilities. So right here at the bottom here of your screen, multiply the probabilities. Right there, there we go. So this is for red, and now we will multiply the probability for blue. Now here's the trick. Here's the little, uh, you know, the little thing you wanna pay attention to, is that they tell us that we are not without replacement. So we are not replacing that red marble that we chose. So how does that affect things? Well, it doesn't affect the number of blue marbles that there are, so it's 18 blue. We'll write that right there. What it affects is this right here. Be careful. Be careful. Because we said no replacement. No replacement. So what does that mean? Do we still have 40? No, we do not. If we take away one red, because we selected that, that's the probability of the first one, right? We will erase at the top right and write 11 right over here. And now that we have 11, we don't have a total of 40 anymore now. We have a total for the second round, we have a total of 39. And that's what I'll write down there. And so hopefully you're starting to see where I'm getting that, right? Compound probability, two events, and they're back to back. But because we saw without replacement, it's not gonna be 40 in the denominator again. We take one away for that red that we would have selected in the first round. So with that, we're good to go. Now it's time to just start calculating. So let's erase all of this. Let's zoom on in and let's get this done as pain-free as possible. Because this is the part where your calculation skills, your mental math skills, your ability to simplify quickly without too much of a mess, this is gonna pay you back so well when you take the actual test. Here's what I mean. Do you want to do 12 times 18 and then do 40 times 39 and then go ahead and turn it into a decimal? Because remember, these answer choices, they're in decimal form. So are you, you know, are you down to go ahead and do that and that and then do all that simplification? Absolutely not. And you don't have to. It's about time for us to find ways to simplify these fractions. Remember, whenever we're multiplying fractions, one thing I always say, my party people, 
is simplify before you multiply. Look at how much help this is going to give us. Let's just look at this first fraction here. 12 over 40. What are 12 and 40 both divisible by? They're both divisible by 4. So I'll go ahead and divide by 4 up here and down here. So this first fraction is going to simplify into 3 over 10. Next, what we're going to have over here on this side, how are we going to simplify this? Well, we have 39, and 39 is 13 times 3. 18 is 6 times 3. So I'll go ahead and proceed by dividing a 3 out of both the numerator and denominator. Once I do that, I'll end up with 6 over 13. Look at that. And there's actually one more thing that we can do. What's that going to be? Well, if you didn't know this already, you can actually, again, when you're multiplying fractions, anything in the numerator can simplify with anything in the denominator when you are multiplying fractions. If you didn't know that, take that note down. Because now what we have is 6 and 10 that can be simplified, and they can both be divided by 2. So this gives us the simplest form that we can possibly get before we multiply, and that'll be 3 over 5 multiplied by 3 over 13. So here, we're good. Let's just go ahead and multiply. We have 3 times 3, that's going to be 9. 5 times 13 is 65. This is a lot more manageable than whatever this and this were about to be, right? So we saved ourselves a ton of time. Remember to leave a comment if this is helping you out. I would love to know if I'm helping you. That way I can make more videos like this. So here, all we have to do now is turn this into a decimal. 65 goes into 9. How many times? Well, we know it doesn't go into 9, so let's go ahead and just start putting those decimals in there. But here's the good thing. Take a look at those answers one more time. Notice how each of the decimals, excuse me there, each of those decimals starts off with a different digit. 1, 2, 3, and 4. So I don't have to figure out all four digits or even two. It's just one because it's either going to start with 1, 2, 3, or 4. So this isn't as tough as you might have thought it was because now 65 goes into 9. Again, it doesn't. So that'll be 0. But 65 goes into 90 just once. We subtract 65, which we don't even have to do at this point. This will end up being 25. Drop the 0 for 250. But again, it doesn't matter. Our answer starts as 0.1. Take a look. A is the only answer that starts with 1. And there we go. No need to continue working. If we did, 65 goes into 250. I believe that would be 3 times. And so then 65 times 3 would be 195. And so then we have 55 left over. And we could continue on if we wanted to. But no point. Now we have 0.13, which should have made it even more obvious of what the answer is. So again, my math party people, if you like me doing more than one problem in one video, go ahead and let me know in the chat box. Next week, we're going to go ahead and release a little mini practice test video for you. So keep a lookout for that. But as always, my party people, it's all about helping you raise your score and get the job you want. So if we're helping you out, like this video, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel. And if you're looking to raise your score in the best way possible, again, shoot us a text over here at 567-698-8867 so you can learn about our Memorial Day sale. Or you can just go ahead and click the link in the description of the video or my profile. That way you can get right to it. My party people, it's been a pleasure. My name's Coach Anderson. Hopefully you're having a good day and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.